Okay, so today I'm at a farm in Norfolk and Norfolk is located in East Anglia, which is in the east of England. Um, what do you think when you look around this area? Do you think to yourself, wow, what a beautiful natural environment? That's what a lot of people think when they look at rural countryside places like this. Well, no, this is not a natural environment. The climatic climax vegetation for the UK is deciduous woodland. That means if you went back hundreds of years, there would be forest here. Um, people have come along, deforest, deforested this land and planted crops. So this is a very human landscape, not a natural landscape. Um, farming is what's led to a population boom. So one of the reasons why there are so many people on our planet today and it's so overcrowded or overpopulated is because of farming. When people stop being nomadic and moving around, hunter and gathering, and they settled down, it meant that they had plenty of food to sustain a larger population. And that's one of the biggest reasons why more and more people have had children and the population's increased so much. Right, I'm gonna talk about the three types of farm. There are three main types of farm. The first one is the one you can see here. This is an arable farm. Um, that means that they grow crops on this farm. Um, so on this particular farm, you might see, well in Norfolk particularly, there's a lot of potato farming, um, wheat farming and barley farming. Wheat and barley are used for making pasta, making bread and making cereals. Um, you might get things like carrots as well. Quite a lot of the wheat and barley is actually used for animal fodder as well. So during the winter months, that will be harvested and used for animal feed. Uh, the second type of farm is a pastoral farm. A pastoral farm is an animal farm. You might have animals like sheep, cows, pigs, chickens. So called a poultry farm, or you might have a dairy farm, so on. Um, and a mixed farm is where you've got a combination of the two. Okay. Different um, animals require different types of things and when farmers decide what sort of farm to have on their land they have to take a variety of things into consideration. So for example if you decide to have a farm with crops on it like this farm here you need a very particular type of soil. So this soil here if you just have a look at it in my hand this is what we call a sandy soil okay this is really good for farming and that's why there's lots of farming in Norfolk because it's quite sandy. That means that the roots can easily pass through the soil um, so that the plants can grow and so they can find nutrients. You can also get a type of soil which is called a clay soil. Um, now that's, if you imagine what clay's like, I don't have a sample here because this is not a clay soil farm, um, but it's very difficult in a clay farm for the roots to get through the soil. Um, and in addition, clay is uh, waterproof. So you can get lots of floods on a farming. We call that the soil being waterlogged. Um, whereas here, the water can easily travel through the soil, so it's less likely to get flooded. So if you want to grow crops on a farm, you really need a nice sandy soil, okay, that water can pass through easily. If you want to have a farm with sheep on it, then sheep are very versatile. You probably wouldn't normally have sheep on a farm in Norfolk because sheep, you can let them roam, okay, they can live in mountainous areas, they can live where the relief is really steep, they can uh, walk around, they don't need very good quality grass, they will just roam around. So you would normally have sheep farms in places like the Lake District in the north of England. Um, this area is very good for pig farming as well, so there's lots of pig farms in Norfolk, and pigs require quite a good soil type and lots of land that's relatively cheap. Um, so with a pig farm, you need well-drained soil like this because you don't want your pig farm slurry to all flood out your farm. In terms of um, a farm with cows on it, so if you're dairy farming, if you've got cows for milk or for beef, um, you do need to have good quality grass. So it's probably quite important that you have a reasonably good soil for cows because you want good quality grass because the cows are quite big and they need to eat grass that's quite thick and lush as opposed to sheep that will eat sort of any type of old grass. Um, right, so if you wanted to have a fruit farm, we don't normally have fruit farms in the UK, possibly strawberry farms and things like raspberries and blackberries, yes, um, but things like oranges, you wouldn't normally see a farm with oranges on it in the UK because there isn't enough sunlight um, and the temperatures and most of the fruits you need a, a long growing season high temperatures and you need lots of sunshine else the fruit won't ripen so in terms of human factors so those are all physical factors that would affect farming but in terms of human factors there are a variety
variety of them. The first one is what technology has the farmer got available? So on this farm, this is an intensive farm and they use fertilizers and pesticides on this farm. That means they spray the crops so they grow faster, so they spray nutrients onto the crops um, and they also protect them from pests as well by using pesticides. The cost of the land is also an important factor. You don't see many farms anymore in London because the land is too expensive to use for farmland. Uh, whereas here in Norfolk, the land is much cheaper, so you're more likely to get large farms because land is cheaper. Um, government subsidies might make a difference as well, so sometimes the government will give money to farmers for doing certain things on their land. Um, the distance to market is quite important here. Uh, so in terms of if you're going to grow a crop, where are you then selling it? Or having, are you having to pay to transport it for miles and miles to its market? Um, a good example is there's, there's quite a lot of poultry farming in Norfolk. Um, and in fact, there's 2.2 million eggs produced per day um, in Norfolk. And part of the reason why this is a good area for chicken farming is because um, a lot of the processing plants where they slaughter the chickens um, and package them up are actually located in this area well so it means you're not spending lots of money transporting the chickens to other places and finally another human factor would be the machinery that you've got available um, so in terms of has the farmer got access to tractors combine harvesters um, seed drills and other heavy machinery that will determine what sort of farm they could have um, so why is farming so important in East Anglia well farming provide jobs in East Anglia um, it's 40,000 direct jobs in farming, but then there are other jobs that are related to it as well. So things like engineering, research into sort of types of food and genetically modified crops, um, vets, so there'll be vets as well that are employed that come and look after the animals, and also um, in terms of machinery, the, the producing and manufacturing of machinery um, for the farmers. So there are many jobs associated with farming in East Anglia, and the total sales um, for one year has been three billion pounds in terms of output for Norfolk. This is an example of an intensive farm as I said previously. Intensive farmers and typically that's happened more in the recent past want to make as much money as they can and to do that they increase the field size so they cut down hedges okay which I've mentioned previously in another video they cut down the hedges they use fertilizer um, and they effectively go for planting as many crops in a small space as they possibly can. Um, so the sort of thing you'd see in intensive farms is you'd see fields a bit like this one that stretch on for miles and miles with no, um, no gaps in between and no woodland. Um, that has a really negative impact on the environment. It means that animals lose their habitats because woodlands are cut down. It means that you get erosion of the soil. Uh, which means that you could no longer grow crops in the long term and it can also lead to flooding. It can lead to flash flooding because there are no trees to intercept the rainfall and there's no roots to take in rainfall either. So all that rain ends up running off over the land and that in addition causes increased soil erosion. So that's all about farming from East Anglia.